While wildlife biologists study this secret and fascinating world, the Forest Preserve Nature Centers translate their findings to the general public. One of the best relationships that we have with the wildlife biology team is to find out what they are doing out there and then to be the educators of that information. Six nature centers scattered across nearly 70,000 acres give visitors a chance to get up close and personal with wild animals who can't be in the wild anymore. The centers serve as a refuge for flora and fauna and an educational gateway for everyone who visits. We also have a connection with the biology team in that sometimes we will find an animal that's been injured here and they'll come to see whether or not it's an animal that they want to do further investigation into. And oftentimes they will let us know if they found an animal and want to know whether or not it's something that we can use here at the Nature Center. This animal was found in the wild running down someone's street, just a residential neighborhood. This animal had been raised in captivity. Don't be mistaken, you would never be able to have this animal as a pet. If he were inside of our house, he would destroy our furniture and he would pee on everything. But they are smart animals. If we work with the coyote and we do basic commands so that we can make it safe for him and safe for us. What do you think, should we feed the coyote? Yeah. He's thinking stop talking and start feeding, right? The animals that are here are wild animals. In fact, we don't even name our animals. The name of our coyote is coyote. Name of our striped skunk is striped skunk. That's to remind the public that they are not pets. The reason that our red-tailed hawk lives with us is one day he might have been chasing after food. He might have flown into a window or gotten hit by a car and he lost one of his eyes. The animals that are here are all here because of some kind of reason, injury, or illness. They have been seen by veterinarians, they've been treated by wildlife rehabilitators, and it's been determined they can't be released back into the wild. When that happens, we offer a setting, an enclosure, a housing, and good health care for the animals, a place where people can learn more about the wild animals of Cook County. And the founders wanted everyone to experience the wonders of nature. What they didn't know was how carefully these pristine spaces needed to be managed. Leadership in the 1920s wanted so badly to make the forest preserves seem like a really legitimate use of taxpayer money that they invited the taxpayers to use it as they wished. And they did, with gusto, through overuse, chopping down trees, using the forest as rent-free summer homes, and driving cars everywhere. Some of the resulting damage came from simple ignorance. Some came from politicians profiting from patronage favors. At the end of the 20s, it became really clear that there had been a lot of damage to the landscape because of this intensive public use. By 1929, the Forest Preserve Board saw they needed a management plan to save the landscape and root out crooked deals. Knowing the area was constantly being developed, they agreed that 75% of their holdings would always be forest lands 